I made two bizarre objects. They were both made from you know, two cups of uh, espresso. One of them glued like this, and the other one glued like this. So this one, I can balance very carefully like this on a support. Whereas the other one, I have really no chance of balancing. I mean, it's very unstable. So you might have the impression that this one is the stable one, and this one is the unstable one, because this you know, bulges out and hugs whatever support it's uh, standing on, whereas this is you know, on a tip. Well, let's do the dynamic version of the experiment. So this is an inclined plane, and we'll try to let this roll down the slope. Here we go. And it rolls down and rolls all the way down very happily. Next, this one. Let's try to make it roll down the slope. And when I do that, oops, it went off the rails. Oops. However hard I try to center it, it really doesn't want to go all the way down. It's very, very, very difficult. <laughs> Almost made it, but not quite. No, it doesn't. Why is this such a good roller all the way down, and why is this such an unstable roller? The difference is very, very interesting, and it has to do with one of the most fundamental, if simplest, ideas in science and engineering, which really is at the heart of today's technology, called stability and instability. Let's first look at this one. Well, as long as I can center this thing exactly in the middle, well, that's fine. It goes straight down, rolls straight down. There's no problem there. But, you know, in nature, you always make mistakes. So there is some error, initial error. Let's say that it has erred slightly to the left, like this. So it's now deviated slightly to the left. But in that case, you see, this thing is going to be supported on the left rail here and on the right rail here. That is, on the left, it's rolling on effectively a wheel that has a large radius. On the here, it's effectively rolling on a wheel that has a small radius. So, you have a large wheel on this side and small wheel on this side. And do you know what they are going to do? It's going to start deviating rightward. In other words, in such a way as to cancel the initial error to the left. So this is a restoring mechanism or an automatic correction mechanism. Whenever there is a, a slight deviation to the left, the system automatically corrects itself by going right. And if it deviates a little bit to the right, it's the same thing. The other way around, it starts automatically going to the left. So there's an automatic correction mechanism. That's why it's so stable. Why, it, Professor? Why can't the big one just roll along slowly and the... And the what, what's, what's the physical thing that happens? Ah, because if you have a small wheel on this side and large wheel on this side, and if they roll both at the same time, you see, per same amount of angular roll, the small one will advance a small distance and the large one will advance a large distance. So you see, this one goes a little, but this one goes large, so it starts curving in this direction. And if you have a small one on this side and large one on this side, it's the other way. It starts curving on this side. So whichever side is smaller, that side is the side toward which the whole thing starts wheeling. So, it's because okay. they're connected, isn't it? That's yeah, the they're connected. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're connected. That's right. Okay. So that's why this thing is such a stable roller, because whenever there is an initial error, which is inevitable, it automatically is correcting its course. So while it's wobbling, around the center, it can stably go down. In contrast, this one is a disaster. Because, again, you know, if you can, if you can at all, center it in the middle, there is no problem. It will roll st straight down. But that's only idealized scenario. In practice, there is always some initial error. Let's, as before, assume that there is a slight error to the left. But then, you see, the left part of this object is supported here on this rail, so it's rolling on a small wheel, whereas the right part is supported here, which is rolling on the large wheel. So whenever it's deviating slightly to the left, you have a small wheel on the left and large wheel on the right. And you know what those wheels will do? They'll start moving toward left. So if there's a, an initial left error, there'll be a tendency to start going even further left, so the error grows and grows and goes out of control and eventually, of course, the whole thing moves off the rails. So there is a mechanism which is opposite to what we had before, that is, whenever there is a small initial error, which is inevitable, there is some mechanism, devilish mechanism, that makes the error grow and grow, and that is called an instability. And in general, in abstract terms, whenever there is a system that we want to control or something that nature gives, and, you know, there are some initial errors in the, in the positioning. Well, if the er error has a tendency to diminish, there's an automatic correction mechanism, that system is stable, and if the error tends to grow, and goes out of control, that's the unstable mechanism. And that is why this can hardly 
go down the slope, whereas this is a very, very stable thing that keeps going down. Professor, anyone watching this is immediately right now going to start thinking about trains, maybe. Yeah, Can that's you tell it. Me what, what's this got, how, how does a train wheel work? So, if the train is going straight, there's no problem. But suppose that he wants to round a corner and he has a wheel, let's say, on this side and he has a wheel on this side and they're connected. As it goes round the corner, the distance that this outer wheel has to travel is actually longer than the distance that this inner wheel has to travel. So there's a problem because they are rotating at the same rate. One of them must skid and that's a very bad, bad situation. So they cannot both roll because distances are, are different. So how do you correct for this, this effect? As long as the wheels are connected, it seems to be completely unsummable as a difficulty. But there is a really nice uh, mechanism. Here is what you should do. Effectively, you should put this kind of design on the pair of rails, you see. So when it wants to go around the corner, the centrifugal force makes this go slightly outside. But that's very good news because as long as it, it's on the outside, that part of the wheel becomes effectively larger and this part effectively smaller. So the distances that they travel are automatically adjusted and indeed the outer wheel does uh, travel longer distance and inner wheel shorter distance and because the wheel radii are different. And of course, in a real train wheel, it doesn't look like that, but actually the designs kind of look like this in cross-section. And this is sitting on the rail like this, and this is sitting on the rail like this. So as it wobbles left and right, the effective wheel size varies, and that automatically adjusts for the uh, stable rounding of corners. It's really a wonderful thing. And by the way, if you designed the wheels in this fashion, that would be really a disaster train that would immediately come off the rails just as this couldn't go down the slope. I wonder if I can actually make it go down all the way. Ah, I managed! <laughs> <laughs> the first time. <laughs> <laughs> You've just undone all that hard work. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> One way to do it is to, from my point of view, the right hand and pull it over and then do this, which produces a perpendicular knot.